There are over 7 billion Google searches made every single day. And the second largest search engine on top of Google is YouTube owned by Google. So search engine optimization, SEO, the ability to help things get ranked both on YouTube and on Google is incredibly important. Uh, my name is Matthew Egan on Twitch. I stream as Trainer Toll and I kept getting questions about SEO from other streamers. And that was like, I, I didn't, it, it didn't occur to me that there would be overlap between uh, the industry that I've been in. I've, I've been an agency owner for uh, 11 years now uh, doing SEO exclusively and it just it kept coming up and as we were uploading to YouTube the question was well what title tags do I use do I put keywords do I put tags you know do I need to put keywords in my in my thumbnail all these questions that kept coming up and it was like all right it's time to create a YouTube channel that specifically speaks to these SEO questions let's dive into the first one If this is your first time joining us, do hit that like and subscribe button. And let's be real, it's the first video on a brand new channel, so it's probably your first time joining us. I reached out to some friends. I wanted to see kind of what the burning questions were uh, within the streamer industry and who better to ask about what streamers are curious about than stream coach Ashna Christ. Hey Matt, it's Ashney. So we always hear that streamers should be using YouTube in order to diversify their brand a little bit so that they can grow their streams. But what a lot of streamers end up doing is just posting highlight videos or clip compilations to YouTube and those videos don't end up getting a lot of views. So what can we do? How can we improve our SEO so that these videos actually get the views that we want them to so that we can really grow our channels. Thank you. That is a great question. Uh, it, it's it's one of those things that it is super, it, it's super cringy for a lot of us that, that create on YouTube when we see videos that get uploaded. I, I saw an upload for a highlight. It was somebody playing Call of Duty. They didn't even put the name Call of Duty. They just put COD gameplay and then the date. They didn't put Call of Duty. They didn't put like what map they were playing. They didn't put any kind of like identifying information. And so the the very first takeaway that I have for you is, you know, figure out what the specific, uh, are you trying for a, a, an achievement? Are you completing a certain quest? Are you, uh, you know, mastering a certain weapon? You know, figure out what the individual keywords are within that, right? So this is my own, this is my own YouTube history. Uh, you can see all the way back to 2016 there on on the, on the far left, and then this this recent activity here since since my YouTube really uh, started blowing up. Um, I realized that the same stuff that I was doing for my clients as an SEO, again I've run an agency for 11 years. The the same tactics I was doing there are what I needed to do on on YouTube, and it, it was like uh, you know night and day where it went from you know no traffic right i had i had some days you know a couple, maybe maybe i get a thousand views in a day from from some some content back then um you know pokemon go uh an announcements uh pokemon go buddy system but again like i just i i puttered out you know it just it wasn't it wasn't growing and then you get to november of of 2019 when pokemon sword and shield came out and i started putting out content that it wasn't just highlights of playing Pokemon Sword and Shield. It was very specific. How to breed for really good IVs. Can you reset EVs? How to, uh, you know, breed for shinies. How to breed, you know, just all, all these different questions. And you can see some of the videos. Uh, there's a couple from uh, the Temtem Alpha uh, Evolving and Hyper Training Shiny. So oh, no, those are Pokemon. Um, the Temtem ones, yeah. So like, where to find barn chic Temtem quests? Uh, you know, how to hatch eggs faster, evolving shiny Dreepy, and hyper training. So every opportunity to include, you know, shiny Dreepy, hyper training, uh, evolving, and hyper training so shiny Sobble. So there's like five keywords in that title alone, right? But if you're just uploading sword and shield highlights, that's not a keyword. That's not something that somebody is uploading. And one of the big things that I see people say is like, well, I, Ninja will post his highlights and he gets a ton of views. You are not Ninja. I, I'm sorry if that is news to you, but I am not. Like, I cannot get by just by posting my my highlights. If we jump to my, and I mean, this is just, this is my real back end. Um, you know, 
I uploaded this video from Final Fantasy VII, uh, where to get the Chocobo and Moogle summon material. It only got 491 views. So even when there are keywords on there, it's hit or miss. But then this Stagger Effect Part 1 video, 20,000 views, over 200 comments because it spoke to a problem, a headache that, would pe that people were having. So how did I uh, go about doing this? When Final Fantasy VII came out, the second it came out, I started playing. Anything that I was frustrated with, anything that was a headache, anything I had to look up on Reddit or whatever myself, I made a video about it. I mean, that's that's very very simply the math. I, I'm a huge Final Fantasy VII fan, but you know, out of four videos that I uploaded, um, you know, one only 491, one 853. That'll that'll wind up with a few thousand thousand views in its lifespan, and then you know, uh, just under 6,000 on this one uh, elemental material and over 20,000 so far on the stagger effect video. So, and, and, and the comments are almost all, oh my God, this quest was so frustrating. Thank you so much for helping me do this. So now this is somebody that's exposed, uh, not just to random highlights. I helped them out. I helped answer a question for them. Uh, because of this, this stagger effect video, I've gained like 300 subscribers on YouTube uh, just since April 10th when that was uploaded. That's been, what, 10, day, 10 days? Yeah, not even 10 days. And, and you know, 300-plus know, new subscribers uh, because of that. You're helping that person out. And by helping them out, you're starting to build that relationship with them, right? Because their first impression of you is that you are someone that's knowledgeable. At the end of your stream, you're making sure that you say, hey, you can pop on and watch me on Twitch. Here's my stream schedule. Here's my URL. You know, you make it very interactive. You put that call to action in there. So it's not just here's an upload of my highlights. It's here's specific things that I'm doing. Um, I did a handful of uh, Animal Crossing videos. One of them got 1,300 uh, just under 1300 views not not great um but then uh, how to transfer from or how to transfer pokemon from pokemon go to pokemon home when pokemon home came out i the second all my friends were talking about it in chat rooms it was like all right time to record and i recorded these three videos uh let's go eevee to pokemon home sun and moon to pokemon home pokemon go to pokemon home i recorded all three of those videos in one night uh, I think I did them live on stream and I did the editing and everything right there. Uh, 178,000 views. And as long as this question exists uh, until the method changes, right? And so, you know, for Let's Go and for Sun and Moon, the question is never going to change, but they may add a direct path to transfer from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Home. We'll see. Uh, but so as long as that question doesn't change, that stays evergreen content. Right. So, uh, again, just like the Final Fantasy seven videos, you know, people are asking that question, how to complete stagger effect part one. Right. Because it's it's a pain in the ass quest. It's not really clear from reading it. And so, you know, 200 comments of people saying, oh, my God, thank you so much. And some of them are me replying. But I mean, it was a lot of comments uh, again, how to transfer Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Home. Um, you know, evolving Smazzy. So rather than doing gameplay of x okay i answer questions when i get frustrated uh temtem this is a great example where the hell is barnshi all right uh so i uploaded a video because i was having the frustration so i figured out what the solution was and that video alone just under 10,000 views um how to evolve starters in temtem it's not obvious uh, in Pokemon, you evolve by leveling to a certain level. In Temtem, you evolve by leveling a certain number of times. That's not obvious. It doesn't explain that in the game. And so people are popping onto Google, popping onto YouTube to ask that question. 24,000 views, you know, answering that question. Uh, I, this was this was a weird one. Uh, and Laurel makes fun of me for this all the time. But how to organize and label your PC boxes in Pokemon Sword and Shield. This is literally just a video, 15,000, almost 16,000 views of me organizing my boxes, right? So rather than just gameplay highlights, it's literally how to do this thing. So if somebody's saying, how do I organize my PC boxes in Pokemon? That's the content that's going to come up. Uh, how to change Rotom's form, almost 5,000 views of just showing where to go pick up a book in a game. It, 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 it sounds stupid. It sounds like why would somebody search for that? How to get Pokerus, 13th, how to EV train with vitamins, 
40,000 views. Um, how to get the Oval Charm, how to get Gigantamax Charizard. I was just trying to cast a wide net, right? How to breed perfect IVs, 23,000. So again, I hope hopefully you're, you're, you're sensing the theme here. We want to ask the questions that we ourselves have when we hit that point of frustration in a game. Put it up as an answer to that question. Now, what I want to caution you about, my strategy is be the first, okay? So I picked up Final Fantasy VII the second I could. We were actually able to get it a day before it came out. I know a lot of people had it even earlier than that, but I like... I know life did because I wanted to be able to get through the story. I wanted to be able to get to the point where I I found the frustrating quest. I'd recorded it while I played. Like if I were to upload that same video today, 20 or 30 different videos have been put up since then answering that question. So when you're playing a hot game, something that just came out, or if you're playing like an MMO and there's a new patch, right? If there's new content, be the first one to explain to somebody how that works. And you might say, well, I play World of Warcraft, but there's so many big websites uh, dedicated to this stuff. They've already explained it from the test realm. And, and in a lot of cases, you're right. Always search what you're thinking about doing before you actually upload it uh, to make sure there's not a bunch of other content already. But you'd be surprised. I, I was surprised with the number of people that had Final Fantasy VII early. I was surprised that I was the first to answer that question on YouTube. Yes, somebody on Reddit might have a thread up speaking to that question, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be in a situation where there, there's content on YouTube for it, right? So just because it's on other platforms, people are still, YouTube is the number one, search, the number two search engine behind Google, and it's owned by Google, right? They're, they're technically the same company. So all those eyeballs, all that behavior, if you're the first video result, sometimes people just want to see it actually done. But not everybody has capture cards. Not everybody can record game footage. It's not really that hard as streamers all know, but not everybody has that ability. So not everybody can just upload, but I can easily explain on Reddit. So the answer is probably going to be on Reddit, but that doesn't mean the answer is going to be on YouTube. So you might be first. And if you're first, you're going to get the lion's share of that content. Now don't upload for keywords that aren't actually addressing the topic that you're talking about, right? Like make sure you're actually uploading the real deal. But uh, you know, that that is how I've brought in over 500,000 views to my channel, generating over $800 so far since November. So just like not even six months yet and it's already generating, you know, hundreds of dollars. So uh, I was able to get to YouTube partner until you reach YouTube partner, which is 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers, then you can't monetize your content. And I had a lot of really good spikes of content that I would have loved to have monetized, but those first 4,000 watch hours, you can't monetize it. You have to have 1,000 subscribers or 4,000 watch hours. But you know, once you unlock that, then you'll start to get paid uh, in ads on your video. And for me, a lot of times I'm looking at it, it's like, okay, I'm playing this video. I have a day job. I... I, I I stream a lot, I YouTube a lot, but it, this is not my only source of income, you know, so I paid for that game or I paid for this microphone arm or I paid for my new camera. You know, the idea is just, you know, spread the YouTube love so that it's generating a little bit of revenue and maybe someday as my subscriber count continues to grow, maybe I can be a full-time YouTuber or a full-time streamer or a combination of the two, but it's just a matter of, of you know, getting out in front of new eyeballs. These people searching, they don't watch your stream. They've never heard of you, right? Even after watching your video, they may forget about you the second after they got the answer that they were after. But it was an opportunity that you would not have otherwise had to expose someone to your brand, right? And so while you're answering those questions, make sure you're doing it in a format that's similar to your stream, right? So then if you're trying to be that bridge between content that drives people to your stream, maybe it's 1%, right? But if that video had a thousand viewers, you know, that's quite a few people over the lifetime of each video getting 10 people here, 10 people there, you know, one person here and there. I cannot express enough the value of a single regular. So uh, when you're doing your highlights, look at the stuff that you're playing. You may have good SEO game content already in your VOD right? And so go in and clip that part out, 
put that on YouTube, but answer the specific questions that somebody might have doing what you were doing. How do I X? That is the real way to get your highlights really ranking well on YouTube. Hopefully after watching this video, you're feeling a little bit more comfortable about being able to take clips from your stream, actually assign some keywords to them and put them online in a way that they can actually be discovered. If your content isn't discovered, then people aren't gonna come across your stream. I get comments all the time from people saying, hey, I saw your YouTube video when I came in. Oh, hey, I had a question about this. I wanted to come in and ask you. We get messages on our Facebook page, on Twitter, all, all sorts of stuff because people found the content. So in order to maximize your discoverability, you wanna make sure that you're using those keywords in your content as opposed to just being super generic. If you found this video helpful, do hit that like and subscribe button, ring that bell so you never miss any of our SEO tips. Uh, Laurel and I do stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, twitch.tv slash trainer toll. I'll see you next time.